Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Lunch and Learn series. My name is Giza Lopez. I'm the Executive Director of the New York State Youth Justice Institute. I want to start by thanking all of you for joining us today. And my special thanks also to Dr. Shad Maruna for joining us from across the Atlantic to share the insights he has gained from his research into desistance from crime. It is a really, really a pleasure to have you here, Shad. Thank you. Our gratitude also goes to our partners at the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services, the New York State Office of Children and Family Services, the University at Albany, as well as the New York State Juvenile Justice Advisory Group for all of their support. I don't want to delay this any further, so I'll pass the baton on to Brian Rainey. Brian is one of the YJI's incredible research assistants. He will go ahead and properly introduce Dr. Maruna. Take it away, Brian. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the New York State Youth Justice Institute's Lunch and Learn webinar series. Um, as Dr. Lopez said, my name is Brian Rainey, and I am a graduate research assistant with the YJI. The goals of this webinar series are one, to act as a source for cutting edge youth justice research, two, to provide this information in an engaging and thought provoking format, and three, to bring together scholars and practitioners from various fields to explore these issues. Um, I have one housekeeping item in the calendar invitation email that was sent out this morning and on Friday. They included a link to a web page showing how to access all of the features used today. Please reference this resource if you have any issues with these features. Um, we highly encourage you to submit your questions as they come up. There will be points throughout the presentation today that are designated for answering audience questions, and we'll have a Q&A portion at the end. We ask that you put all of your questions for Dr. Maruna into the Q&A section, and comments can be submitted in the chat. And now that the housekeeping item is done, I think that we're ready to hear from an international expert in desistance. Dr. Shad Maruna is a professor of criminology at Queen's University Belfast in Northern Ireland. Previously, he has worked at the University of Albany SUNY School of Criminal Justice, as well as the University of Cambridge and Rutgers University, where he was the Dean of the Rutgers School of Criminal Justice. His research focuses on desistance from crime and implications for prisoner integration. He is the author or editor of seven books, including Rehabilitation, Beyond the Risk Paradigm, 50 Key Thinkers in Criminology, and most recently, The Oxford Handbook of Criminology. His book, Making Good, How Ex-Convicts Reform and Rebuild Their Lives, was named the Outstanding Contribution to Criminology in 2001 by the American Society of Criminology. So without further ado, Dr. Shad Maruna. Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope you can see me and hear me, yeah? That would be two, two good things uh, to start off with. Um, now I am going to share my screen so you don't have to look at me too much. Um, and we will go to, um, to from the beginning. Okay, I hope that looks like a PowerPoint presentation. Um, uh, thanks very much for having me. This is a, um, a real honor uh, in, in, in all sorts of ways. And, and uh, I'm, I'm only uh, up, uh, upset isn't quite the right word, but I'm, I'm sad that I, that I can't be there in person in, in, in Albany uh, to, to join you all. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit, uh, as we say, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a short um, a short tour uh, of a longish career, and, and, and um, I'm, I'm going to try to pack a lot in as we go. Um, Brian, uh, do you want to, to do the, the, the first quiz? Uh, we're going to be talking about this thing called uh, desistance from crime, and, and um, I was told to throw in a few polls here. And, and one of the things I wanted to, to poll with you is just to, to get a sense of, of how familiar uh, people are with this concept of desistance before I carry on. Um, and and um, so, so you've got a few choices here, uh, one of which is you're already an expert on desistance from crime, uh, others all the way down to you have no idea what desistance is. Uh, so I'll give you a, a, a few seconds here. Okay, this is this is looking good. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the my worst nightmare uh, would be the first one, obviously, that everyone here 
knows more about the subject than I do. Um, good to see there's only about six of you in, in that camp. Uh, the next worst nightmare would be the last one that, that you've never heard the word desistance. So uh, about a quarter of you there and, and, and the rest uh, somewhere in, in, in the middle in terms of uh, knowing uh, 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 enough to get by or at least having some basic familiarity with, with, with the word. So, so that's, that's exactly uh, what I was hoping for um, and, and uh, will, will leave me the perfect opportunity. So in, in 21 minutes or so, I am going to try to give you a sense, uh, a very subjective sense of what desistance means to me anyway, and, and, and what, it's, um, uh, what, what implications I think there are for, for youth justice work in particular, but, but, but justice uh, policy in, in, in general. Um, so let me click on and switch sides. Um, so so uh, I, at least uh, personally, am, am now about uh, 20 odd years down this road uh, of, of desistance and, and have been uh, well studying the topic lo longer than that even. Um, and, 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 um, the, the, uh, the, the research, as much as I try to get away from it, uh, I'm always pulled back to do one more job on, on, on desistance and, and it, it, it's become sort of part of me and, 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 and part of what I, I, I do. So, so I'm, I'm really um, and somewhat evangelical about, about uh, spreading the, the, the gospel of, of, of desistance and good news. But I wanted to point out um, you know, it's, it's sometimes people see, see desistance as, oh, that's that, that British thing, uh, which, which is great uh, to, to me uh, because it, it, it suggests that we've had some impact o o over here uh, in, in the UK where, where there's a number of us who, who uh, have focused on desistance research and, and, and policy uh, realm in particular. Uh, but but uh, um, as Brian said in the introduction, uh, I'm, I'm not from these parts originally. I'm, I'm, uh, I haven't even come close to picking up a Belfast accent and, and despite being over in this part of the world for, for a couple of decades now. Um, and, and actually my, my first ever academic job uh, was at, at, at SUNY Albany uh, in, in, on, uh, on Washington and Western there. Uh, and, and, um, and what a job it was, what a place to start um, uh, one's criminology career with some of the, the best criminologists and the world there, um, I, I uh, uh, um, have a lot of great memories of, of Albany. This was where my, my, my daughter was born, my oldest, um, where my first job, as I mentioned, where I, I did the writing on the book, Making Good, that, that, that I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, but, but probably my two biggest influences, my two biggest memories from that time are, are, are these two fellas. Uh, and, and the photograph, uh, both both 90 year old uh, Albany residents uh, whom you, you probably recognize uh, and if you're, you're in the justice world. Um, uh, when I was there, uh, these guys would have been in their, their late 60s uh, and, and uh, I'm still not quite there yet myself. So I was an unusual young fella to be to be uh, hanging out with, with these guys. Uh, but but uh, thank goodness I did because they, they really did teach me everything I knew, uh, the, the, the place in the middle is, is a place called Schuyler Inn. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's still standing. I hope it's still standing. Anyway, we used to, uh, they used to have a thing called pasta nights on, on Wednesdays. Uh, and, and we were there every Wednesday, um, both before and after my, my daughter was, was, was born. Uh, um, and, and, and the Schuyler, um, and, and is part of the Father Young's, uh, enterprise and was, was a big part of where, where I used to, hang out with Tom LaBelle, who's now uh, himself a, a, an established criminologist, and we used to plot um, the, the revolution that became desistance uh, theory there, there at, at, at the Schuyler with, with the, uh, the, the, the group uh, there, uh, learn, learning from them uh, as we went. And, and, and the other fella in the photograph is, is Hans Talk, uh, who, who was my men mentor at Albany, uh, a colleague, but, but obviously he knew a lot more than, than I ever could about prisons and, and post-prison life. So, so um, it, it was really from these two guys and, and, and um, both are, are still doing well. They're, they're, they're both having serious health problems as, as, as you probably know, uh, so can't be here today, but, but, um, but, but what, what lives they've led and, and what, what, what tribute, uh, uh, it, 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 um, um, they, they were wonderful times. So, so it's good to be back in Albany for that. 
Um, now I need to click on the screen. Um, back to life course, um, in terms of desistance, th th this is where the, the, the desistance, study of desistance began, also in the study of crime and the life course, or, or what was called in the 1980s, uh, criminal career research. Um, we we, we uh, uh, got very interested in the recognizing that, that criminality wasn't a, a permanent trait of individuals, but rather had its own kind of life course or career as, as we, we called it. And, and fundamental to that is this notion of the age crime curve. And this is a, a, uh, a British example from 20 years ago um, uh, of an age crime curve. For a hundred years uh, of data collection, the age crime curves almost wherever you collected them looked largely like this one with, with lots of variation from region to region and so forth. But, but um, a, a crime tends to, to start in, in the sort of early adolescence, peak uh, in, in late adolescence or the early 20s in, in, in this case, um, hang around until uh, mid twenties uh, or early thirties, and then steeply decrease thereafter. Um, th this is a, a graph of, of official convictions, uh, and, and in which case, you know, there, it's picking up a lot of different things. Uh, we we know that that um, young people involved in crime have a high mortality rate. Lots of them end up in prison for the rest of their lives. And so they wouldn't appear in, in a graph like this in their, their, their 30s, 40s. Um, but, but for the most part, we know from, from a lot of longitudinal research where individuals are followed over time, um, the, the same individuals uh, year after year, uh, we, we, we find that, that most of them, uh, the reason they disappear from, from the, this graphic as they age is that they, they desist from crime. They, they, they give up criminal behavior. They move away from crime. I, I, I should say uh, there's been a big change in this age crime curve in, in the last 10 years or so. Um, and and uh, that isn't very common. As I mentioned, the age crime curve is one of the sort of most predictable um, statistics we've got in criminology. But, but the, the uh, involvement of young people in crime, as, as you're, you're very familiar, more familiar than I am, has dropped precipitously in, in, in recent years so, so that this peak no longer peaks uh, as dramatically as it does. It still peaks in early adulthood, uh, late, late adolescence. Uh, it still drops and declines as, as one gets older. There's no uh, switching around of the curve uh, or, or anything dramatic like that, but, but it has been a nice uh, uh, development that we've seen the, the, this, this um, decrease. But anyhow, um, from, from our traditional research on age crime curve, and again, it's an impossible statistic to measure, but we, we think that something like 85% of those people that, that we give the label of offenders or delinquents or young offenders will actually desist from crime, will cease criminal activity uh, it, it, sometime in their late 20s uh, or around age, age 30. And we know this again from developmental research. And that, so that's what desistance is. It's this long-term abstinence, abstinence from crime among those who had previously been engaged in, in, in criminal behavior. Um, we like to say desistance is a process or it's a journey. It's not an event. Uh, we don't study that, that moment when people turn from bad to good. Uh, it, it doesn't work like that. We study that long-term process of, of resisting, abstaining from, from criminal behavior, which is a strange thing to study because it's essentially studying inactivity uh, where, where we're looking at people who aren't doing something, which is, is a fairly unusual thing. But we find that desistance is its own kind of activity uh, uh, li like offending. And, and so what desistance research then is, is, is learning from success stories, learning from those who, who have made it out and try to understand how they got there. Uh, how did they, they desist from, from criminal behavior? Um, uh, why is it a, a, a big deal? Well, well, there was an article not too long ago uh, about the huge crime drop in, in the United States. Uh, and, and, and it asked this question, why crime went away? Now, now that's a over dramatic as, 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 as you can say, as, as you, you know, but there, there's been a, a, no question uh, um, internationally, a, a huge drop in, in, in violent crime in, in particular. Um, the article went on to ask why people thought it was, so I thought I would use one of my, my three quizzes to ask you why you think
Prime went away. Brian, uh, if you want to cue the, uh, the quiz there. Um, we, we just four options here. Um, when, when they in the article, they interviewed folks and in, in, in police forces, uh, police chiefs in particular, and most police chiefs said it was because of the things they were doing, be it uh, zero tolerance or, or broken windows policing and so forth. When, when he interviewed uh, people um, in, in, in the drug sector, they talked about changes in, in, in drug markets. When they interviewed folks uh, like many of you uh, um, in, in youth justice, and they, they talked about changes uh, in, in, in youth justice practice and, and, and so forth. Um, and, but it looks like you're, you're fairly split as, as a group between these, um, between these different options. Uh, but most of you, I've, I see about 50% uh, now are leaning toward uh, the, the, the age structure of society. There, there's no right or wrong answer to, to this quiz. Um, we as criminologists, uh, like with, with the economic decline, none of us predicted the, the, the crime drop. Um, in, in fact, the predictions were quite the opposite. If you remember the early 90s and, and the, the coming of the juvenile super predators wave and all these sort of things. So, so uh, um, we didn't predict it and, and we can't explain it in retrospect uh, for the most part. But when they ask people to explain it in, in the Time magazine article, they, they, the criminologists said the same thing that, that you said, that if we've become an older society, there's fewer 18 year olds running around than there were in the 1970s, 1960s. 1980s when crime peaked. Now we're a, we're a grayer society, fewer children, more, more older people, and that that accounts for for why we we've seen this this, this big drop. And anyway, I bring it up because the article had this lovely quote in it. Uh, it, it says um, violence is typically a young man's vice. That that's not sexist in that it really is that gendered, but it also is is an aged pattern thing. It says it's been said that the most effective crime fighting tool is a 30th birthday. And it's just one of my favorite quotes in that, um, you know, I'm a criminologist who, who doesn't study a lot of, of uh, crime control mechanisms. I don't work with the police. Uh, um, I, I, I work with, with, with agencies on, on the back end of uh, reintegration programs like, like Father Young's. But, but uh, it, it turns out I, as a developmentalist, who my the research largely studies 30th birthdays, uh, I'm studying the, the, the most effective crime fighting tool uh, that we've got. And, and, and I uh, think I have a slide. This is my, the, the, the book I'll talk about if, if, if I haven't run out of time yet, uh, called Making Good. Uh, in Making Good, um, it, I compared two samples, one sample of, of active offenders uh, who, who had been to prison on average about three years and compared them to a, a sample of desisting ex-offenders, again, who, who had about three years in prison, but had turned their lives around since and, and had at least two years of, of, of straight life, uh, um, clean living behavior, uh, uh, moved away from criminal behavior. Um, and the, the only reason I put this up is the median age of both groups at the time of the interviewees that I talked to were 30 years old. I was 30 years old when, when, when I wrote the book. Uh, and, and, and so this, this magic of turning 30 uh, was a big part of my career. I'm, I'm now older than that and, and, and I haven't done anything since. So, so there really is something important about uh, being 30. What, what do we know about this, um, the magic of turning 30? Well, well, we know uh, a, a good bit from the desistance research. What, uh, the things that seem to be related to desistance from crime are things like um, uh, stable families, strong relationships, um, stable employment. So, so a steady job and the love of a good woman is, is, is the, 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 the joke uh, that, that, that I like to say it could be a love of a good man or, 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 or any, any gender one, one chooses, but we also uh, know that, the, um, that some of this is driven by simply a move away from same age, same sex peers. Uh, we know that a lot, most crime is committed in groups and, and, and usually committed in, in peer groups, same sex peer groups, um, you know, whether it's what we call gangs uh, 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 among youth or, or you know, when, when, when I go out uh, very, very rarely, I'll occasionally go out with the boys uh, of, of my, uh, cohort and 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 whenever one goes out with the boys, the gang, uh, you're, you're more likely at higher risk of, of of winding up in trouble than than if if you stay in the, these mixed sex, mixed age uh, in, in environments, whether they be in a relationship, employment, or or the like. 
from a psychological perspective, we know that the desistance is correlated to feelings of, of hope, self-efficacy, a sense of purpose and direction in one's life. Um, this is more of the research that I do. Increasing concern for others, and, and, and in particular, caring for one's children are all things that are related to desistance. Now, I'm giving the impression that it's a kind of a, a risk factor or a checklist model, and, and, and it's really not. I mean, I, I've um, become much more interested over the years in desistance as a journey, as a process, rather than, okay, what are the ticks that, that you have on, on, on your list that would predict whether you desist or not? And I think it's a more helpful way of thinking about it. Some of the, the steps or stages in, in the process that we look at in the book, Making Good, um, the, the desistance tends to start with, with a role model. Uh, people say, I, I first thought about desisting when, when uh, 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 my, my older brother, he went straight, or, or, or my, my cousin, a, a, an associate, someone I knew from my, my time in prison or the like. Um, uh, these kind of role models and mentors are essential in any walk of life. We don't expect people to become uh, plumbers or academics uh, without having met others in, in the trade. Uh, and likewise, in order to desist, people need to, to be uh, exposed to people who are also desisting as, as role models. Um, we often heard that there was a point in which uh, either that person or another important person in their life saw something in me that said uh, I was more than just an offender. They, 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 they saw, they said, look, you're better than this and gave me a sense that, that actually I could achieve something in, in my life for the first time. And this was one of these, these phrases that, that we, we would hear over and over again, you know, um, I found a girlfriend and she saw something in me that nobody else could see, including me. I, I, I didn't know that, that, that I could do these sort of things. Um, they eventually find some sort of empowering role, uh, not just as, as a treatment and, and, and care from others, but rather a, a, um, a, a, a giver, a helper uh, themselves, some, some sort of leadership or quasi-leadership role where, where, where they're able to, to uh, feel empowered in, in that way. Uh, and then, then uh, lastly, um, their, their change in behavior, uh, they, these new patterns, new ways of being, are, are, tend to be formally recognized in some way by, by those uh, around them. So, so they will often say, you know, uh, uh, you, you should meet so-and-so, this professional. They'll tell you I'm the biggest turnaround they've seen. They, they told me that they've never seen somebody uh, who, who's turned their life around so well as, as I have and so forth. So, so this need for reflection back and, and recognition of these changes was, was a big part of, of the journey. So, so those are two very uh, rapid slides. Uh, I got a note saying, you don't have to rush quite so much, but my clock says the opposite. My clock says, I'm, 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 I'm really pushed on time. So, so uh, I, I've crammed a lot into those two slides. Um, if you want more, there's a link, I think, to this film. We made a film on this, this journey called The Road from Crime. There's, there's a, a version with English subtitles. It's all in English, but it's our English, not, not yours. And, 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 and you're going to struggle, even if you think you can understand British accents, uh, you, you'll, you'd be surprised. So, so uh, if you want to check that out, that's, that's free uh, to look at uh, on the links. Um, so what is any of this good to you? What, what's the, the, the relevance? Um, to, to, to the work that you do. Well, since the beginning, the earliest founders of kind of desistance research, the Glucks, Sheldon and Eleanor Gluck, way back in 1945, um, I won't say who, who they were peers with uh, among the earlier photographs, but, but anyhow, the, the, the Glucks uh, uh, were among the first to, 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 say, to study desistance, and they were among, among the first to say, well, the whole point of studying desistance is to see if we can speed this process up. Yes, it's a natural process. Yes, it's a, a, a organic process, but, but um, uh, uh, by learning how the process works, hopefully we can, we can speed it up and, 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 and um, um, help, help others on, on that journey. Uh, and this has become, as I mentioned, a, 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 a kind of 15 minutes of fame. We, 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 we had a moment, I, I almost talk about it in past tense now because I think the, the, the the British system has moved on to other crises, including COVID, of course, um, um, Brexit, uh, but, but also uh, are some serious problems in the criminal justice system. But there for a while, uh, everybody was talking desistance, certainly in the youth justice system and probation, uh, which has had its own shakeups if you've been following the British systems. 
uh, everybody uh, wanted to, to say that what they were doing was desistance focused or desistance related uh, and the, these kind of things. And, 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 and so it, it's been exciting to see the, these different variations of, of folks trying to, to do um, desistance work. Um, it, it, if we have a little time, um, you might be asking yourself, well, how is this different than, than what works or is this what works? Um, this is another uh, one of our polls. If, we, if we've got uh, time for uh, the last of the, uh, the little quizzes. Um, Brian, um, yep, there we go. Uh, you should, I, I think I know the answer to this. Uh, as, as in the, the, the quote, uh, evidence-based policy is, is uh, dominated by one question. And if you ever go to a conference, you ever pick up a, a textbook uh, or, or, or buy a t-shirt somewhere on there, it will say uh, what works. Uh, so when we think about uh, rehabilitation, that's kind of the number one question that, that, that everybody has. And it looks like uh, most folks, uh, as, as I predicted, hardly anybody has not heard uh, the phrase what works according to the poll. So, so uh, that, that's as, as I would have uh, predicted it. Um, but, but what works is something different. So what works is based on, on program evaluations. Uh, it, it's based on, on um, um, meta-analyses of, of different uh, uh, evaluations, ideally random control trials. So, so you are uh, testing whether a control group uh, does better or worse than a treatment group uh, after you've get, delivered uh, them this a, a, a particular uh, intervention. Uh, and it, it's much like, indeed, the, 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 the language is all borrowed from, from medical science, and, and, and it's uh, uh, very similar to the way we would test pharmaceuticals and, and, and the like. Um, what, what works usually means is that, that a, a treatment group has a, 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 about a 5 or 10 percent, in the best case scenarios, difference between um, their outcomes and the outcome of the control group who received uh, uh, an ordinary probation sentence or, 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 or youth penalty uh, and, and not the, the, the uh, intervention that you're seeking to test. Uh, uh, so so they, they would be results like this, where, where you're looking for fairly small but, but deeply meaningful uh, differences between groups uh, in, in terms of those who received the treatment and, and, and those who, who didn't. Um, that, that's not what uh, desistance is doing. It, it, it's uh, completely consistent with desistance research. It, it's it's um, co-equal, shall, shall we say, and complementary. Um, but but desistance research is doing something different. So I often uh, it can take this comparison outside of criminology, and, and I say, uh, imagine instead of trying to reduce youth crime, that you wanted to, to lose weight. Um, I've given up because of COVID, uh, but I gave up probably long before that as well. But if I did want to lose weight, I, I would do one of, uh, well, I would do a couple of things. One thing is I would look for all the what works evidence I could find. Uh, and, and, and this is all of the, the random control trials and program evaluations of, of you know, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, um, the, whatever the, 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 the latest di diets and models that are out there. I wanna see the research. I want the, the evidence of which of these uh, uh, programs I should invest my, my time and my money into. Um, and, 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 and that makes perfect sense. Um, the bad news in that regard is the best available evidence, meta-analyses and, and, and uh, uh, systematic reviews that are out there suggest uh, they're all about the same. Um, you, you're you're going to gain the weight back. Um, sorry, uh, um, but uh, um, all of them help a little, but, but or, or there's no magic bullet out there in terms of programs. It probably sounds pretty familiar for those in, in the justice world. Um, but you might also be interested in, in, in finding individuals who are themselves able to lose weight and keep that weight off successfully uh, and, and, and find out what they did differently. Um, and, and that's desistance research. That, that's the, the, the focus of, of desistance. It's not about programs. Maybe they, they, they took uh, Weight Watchers. Maybe they were on, on, on Jenny Craig. Uh, um, likely they cycled through a dozen such programs, uh, but something changed in their lives, um, perhaps outside of programs. You know, the, the, the bottom line with this research is um, they're, they're, they're eating less and, and, and they're exercising more because they're, 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 they're sick people. But, but, uh, but we in desistance research want to go beyond that and, and say, 
okay, yes, they're, they're eating less and, and exercising more, but what's changed about the way they think of themselves, the way they think about food? What's changed about their social circumstances? Is it because they're in these better circumstances that they've been able to, to eat less and exercise more? What, what, what's changed about um, their sense of self and, and, and so forth? And that's what we do in distance research. Um, I have a slide about um, this was one of the experts in this field, uh, Frank Sachs at, at Harvard, well, one of the people who said, look, nothing works in terms of all these different diets. He says that he's regularly, this is a New York Times article I, I, I found since um, from a New York Times article um, where he says people come up to him and say, yes, but what about my cousin Joe? What about my, my neighbor Frank? Uh, she, she, they lost weight. Uh, and surely and um, the, 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 this means the programs must work. And he says, well, no, it's, uh, there's a difference between a program working on, on a predictable basis and these individual journeys. So when people say, well, what makes Joe different than, 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 uh, than Frank, he, he, uh, Dr. Sachs says, beats me because they haven't done the, the, the kind of desistance research. So, so what we want to do is to try to be able to answer those questions of individual differences as well as the collective, uh, the, the, the important, uh, what works pragmatic questions. Um, how am I doing on time? Uh, uh, how am I doing? Uh, I'm asking that to Brian and then in our little private chat and he'll get back to me. Um, I, I, I have a couple of, of anecdotes. Um, I, I could probably skip down to the punchline or, or, or we could, uh, um, I'm waiting for a response. I'm just gonna carry on until he tells me to, to, to stop. Um, what isn't desistance practice? Um, there, there, there's uh, um, a lot of, of, of bad ways of interpreting this notion uh, of desistance-focused practice. Uh, this is the worst uh, example that, that I can think of. Um, this is from a 1995 book by, by, by uh, a fellow Northwesterner, uh, John McKnight. And, and John's uh, taking a tour of Cook County Jail um, and, and on this tour, he, he, he comes to this, this massive room where he's looking down over a room full of, of, of a thousand inmates, uh, and, and he's just dismayed by what he sees. He says, some watched the television, some talked, some played cards, many just stared into space. Almost all of them were, were, were minority males, um, except for, for meals, one hour in a small yard outside in cell time. They spent all their time in this room. And John's looking down at this room and he, he, he just can't figure out what he's seeing here. He says, you know, where's the, the rehabilitation? Where's the, 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 um, um, the purposeful activity? Uh, and, and the warden uh, who, who's taking him on this tour says, look, you may not realize this, but what you're observing is the only method of rehabilitation that we are sure works. Uh, these men are aging. When they reach a certain time in their late 20s or early 30s, they're gonna stop engaging in the behavior uh, that brought them here. Uh, you see, the one thing we know for sure is, is that that um, people will will uh, change as, as the age. Uh, so, so that um, is is a deeply cynical, but actually incorrect uh, interpretation of this thing uh, that, that we call desistance. Um, if you remember, um, the, you know, age crime. Even though there's a strong relationship between age and crime, this isn't a biological process. It's not a predictable process like puberty that always happens. You know, there's that, that nothing magic about what happens on that 30th birthday that, that causes people. Uh, development is far more complicated than that. Uh, people mature in a society. They mature uh, with interactions with the world around them. And, 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 and they certainly don't if they're staring catatonically in, in, in Cook County Jail, you know. So, so uh, the job of assistance research is to dissect that maturation into its component parts. It, it, you know, what is it about turning 30, the, the, the magic that we see? You know, can we, can we find out what constitutes the mediating mechanisms at work in this process? And, and, and again, if you, if you think about those factors that we, we've said are, are related to desistance from crime, uh, most of these um, are, are countered uh, by the, the idea of, of incarceration. So what might impede these normative processes like stable families? Well, incarceration does a terrible job of keeping families together. Uh, stable employment, well, having a criminal record, uh, uh, Sarah Loggison's research on, on, on how that impacts a, a person long-term uh, and so forth uh, is, is, is hugely detrimental to a, a, a good career. 
uh, moving away from same age, same sex peers. No, the um, uh, incarceration puts them all together with their peer groups. Uh, feelings of responsibility are difficult, concern and, and caring for children. All of these things uh, you know, are, are counter to what we already do in the justice system. So, so I'm always suspicious about uh, um, institutions that say they're desistance focused and desistance led. Uh, so so what, what can we do to, you know, you could imagine going through that list and countering e each one of those as best you can. Um, we, we've come up with, with sort of a, a handful of, of, of generalities of what the, the shift of desistance means. Um, it means a, a shift away from short term workbook based programs to a focus on whole lives, uh, stages of change and long term journeys that individuals are already going on uh, to, toward desistance. It means a move away from a medical model that looks at treatment effects and so forth to a more organic, naturalistic model. How can we work with this person where they're at in, in their communities and, and so forth? It's a move away from top-down processes of countering and targeting uh, deficits. So this is a, from, from a colleague, what, moving from what's wrong with them to what's strong with them, uh, the, to, to move to, to a focus on letting them explore and demonstrate their strengths and then likewise, most uh, finally, is a move from the, the uh, experience of expertise coming from Canada or coming from an international community, and instead the, 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 the grounded wisdom of those who have traveled the process. So, so going to the source and finding out, you know, uh, what's the easiest way to get out of a minefield like, like re-entry, uh, the, the easiest way is to follow the person in front of you. And if they got out that way, follow them in, 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 in that kind of kind of manner. So, so uh, I think this is where I'm gonna stop. Uh, um, and and thanks, thanks very much uh, for listening. I look forward to, to some dialogue with you all. Thanks, Shad. Um, so what do you see as the biggest obstacle to desistance and, and how can people overcome it? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Um, you know, there's so many obstacles. Um, you, you, there's, there's um, some, I, I have a, a slide I sometimes give of, of um, quotes of people saying that basically the, the returning uh, um, prisoner or, or, or young offender it faces an almost impossible situation. And these are quotes that go back to, to 1908, 1936, 1975. You know, we've been saying that for 100 years. It, it, it's kind of a, uh, 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 one of the best known facts in social sciences. Um, you, you take somebody who has um, every kind of disadvantage already, be it um, um, neighborhood, uh, education, family, uh, human capital sort of disadvantages. It. And then uh, um, you, you, you put them through a process like the, the criminal justice system, which, which labors them with, with further stigma uh, and, and, and uh, um, it exposes them to, to uh, all sorts of, of negative influences along the way. Um, so, so to, to me, the, 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 um, the, the, the thing that captures all of that is, is a kind of, um, whether you call it stigma or, or, or shame, you know, the, 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 the person who, who has to overcome all the disadvantages that life has given them to, to begin with, but also uh, the, 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 the even more, the, the, the recognition, the ceremonial uh, certification of, of the justice system that said th this is this person is other. They are now a felon, and 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 that comes with it um, all sorts of, of um, loss of civil liberties and civil rights. But it also comes with interpersonal uh, um, aspects of, of, of shame and and, and also uh, discrimination uh, amongst uh, society. So, so desistance in, in many ways is a kind of a mirror. To, to those processes. And we can learn a lot from how stigma works because it's a, it's a social dynamic uh, that, that, that involves all of us in, in society. So, so desistance likewise is, is, is shining a different kind of mirror at, at, at individuals and, and um, it is, is obviously a, 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 a happier and a more positive dynamic, but, but it involves many of the same processes just kind of in reverse. So, so all the things that we do to people that, that, that stigmatize and exclude them, uh, we, we kind of have to reverse. So if, if social exclusion 
is, is a big part of, of, of uh, persistence in crime, then social inclusion is, is, is likewise in, in the counter side of, of, of assistance from crime and so forth. Thank you. Um, is there any reason to believe that the, the current pandemic will have any impact on individuals' uh, desistance processes? Hmm. Uh, it's a great question. Um, it, it, it will because uh, it, it's influenced everything. Um, you know, how, how, uh, how the impact will work is, is a, tougher, uh, a tougher prediction to make. You know, you could tell stories one way or the other. Um, certainly, um, in my, the, the part of the world where I live, the pandemic has meant shutting down a lot of the, the uh, reintegration work we would normally do. Uh, certainly inside institutions has, has been completely stopped uh, for, for the last seven months or wh whatever it's been now, feels like seven years. Uh, and, and, and so you're getting less of those kind of role models coming in to, to, to facilities, less of the, of the kind of lifelines of, of groups and, and organizations that can provide that kind of hope, that can provide the, the uh, uh, pathways out. Um, but at, at the same time, you know, the, the, uh, the pandemic has meant, and, and I, I did attend your, your, your previous seminar, uh, you know, it, it is, is, uh, had an impact on, on, on criminal uh, behaviors as, as well. And, and, and so because more people are at home, more people, there's more eyes on the street and these kind of things, uh, there, there may be uh, some, some benefits in, in, in the sense of, of less criminal uh, opp opportunity uh, to engage in as, as well as, as the less positive engagements. Thank you. Um, so we're getting a lot of great questions from the audience. Okay. So uh, I think we'll shift into that. Um, so one of the questions is, um, so making good was, was one of your, your larger studies, your more well-known um, books. Um, so if you're starting this study, the making good study today, um, what would you do differently, if anything? Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, so much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How about that? Well, and, 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 you know, partially it's, it's, we, 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 we know a lot more now, you know, I mean, it was, uh, uh, they were, it was, it was more innocent times as, as it were. And, 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 you know, uh, I think younger, Scholars and and some of this without being uh, taking too much credit, you know, we we've, we've changed the field um, in doing the desistance research. But but the field has changed. And 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 at the time when I was doing that re research, I mean, it, it was it was the early '90s. But you know, there was still the the um, uh, the stain of of nothing works from the 1970s and this sense of you know I, I remember telling. Uh, certain hiring committees and so forth that, that this is what I was focusing on and they sort of re really rehabilitation I mean isn't that dead is there really any uh, is there any uh, uh, mileage to be had in rehabilitation uh, and, and, and of course it was only a few years later in 1999 that uh, Jeremy Travis wrote uh, the, the first but they all come back report and and the, the, the Janet Reno and Clint this is this is going way back for, for some of the audience here, but, but those, you know, we had this, this sort of rediscovery of re-entry in, in, in the, the late 90s. Um, when I was doing this, the, the work, there, there, there wasn't even the word re-entry. So, so, I mean, I, I caught a very fortunate wave in that sense, but, but also it was just, you know, there, there was a lot uh, that, that I did that, that um, now in reading it uh, and the post kind of, you know, new Jim Crow and 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 the uh, uh, all that we know now, and and, and a kind of lens of, of Black Lives Matter and so forth, it can look pretty retro, you know. But but you, you have to understand this was the the, the crime bill days of, of, of 1994 that, that that we were doing this research, and, and so um, uh, uh, it was a little bit more individualistic. Uh, than, than I would do it now. I, I, I would uh, I'd be much more uh, interested and I'd become much more interested in later work in, in sort of structural factors and, and systemic factors involved. Uh, the, the, the original work was, um, you know, some of the, the critiques is it, it, it's, it's too narrowly individualistic. I, I still stand by um, an interest in human lives. I, I like people and I like to see the journeys that individuals take, but it's important to to frame those journeys in a, in a wider context. And 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 the book 
although it tries to do that a little bit, it, it certainly isn't its main main goal. So, so, so I think uh, uh, if the book were, were done today and, and, and it, it could be and, and, and still you know, should be, uh, I think those things would be a bigger part of the conversation than, than they were when, when I did the research. Thank you. Um, another question is, um, what are the criminal justice policy implications of this really important, rich research on desistance, um, raising the upper age of juvenile jurisdiction, expungement. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, you, you know, yes, all the above. Uh, I'll, I'll start with expungement because that's that that's a, a really key one. So, so you know, in the research, um, the, one of the the chapters or a big function is, is this thing called rebiographing. Uh, this is a word that I stole from someone else. I steal a lot of really ugly words like, like desistance uh, and, and people hated rebiographing. But, but this was uh, people uh, who were able to su successfully desist from crime uh, often went back and rewrote their past histories to make them consistent with who they were now. And, and, and part of that, you know, it, it wasn't about denying criminal offenses, but it was about um, justifying those criminal, uh, not exactly excusing, because we're not supposed to do excuse making, but it was situating those criminal behaviors in a context that, that could separate it out from who they really were. That, that deep down, even when I was in the, the throes of my addiction and, and, and doing the, the, the worst criminal behavior I was doing, I was always who I was now, deep down. I always knew this wasn't me. I always knew this was wrong and, and so forth. So, so that, um, uh, uh, that, that process we saw organically happening uh, among the sisters. The problem was uh, that, that their, their self-narratives didn't co correspond with their, their legal life history, which said, you know, you were a felon, you did X, Y, and Z. And, and, and it was always about going back to that. Well, that was a different person. That's not who I am now. I, I, you know, you have to understand all that in its context, but, but uh, in the starkness of a criminal record, that, that, that context is, is always blurred. And, and all you can see is, is, is the, the, the red letter F on, on the record. So, so um, any uh, um, policy uh, uh, changes that, that can help people move away from those, those, those criminal records. And, and, you know, uh, um, I, I'm all in favor of sealing uh, records uh, and, and, and we in the United Kingdom have a thing called the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act that, that has gotten more progressive in recent years in terms of who all is eligible and, 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 and how long they have to wait before they can seal adult offenses as well. Um, but I'm also in favor of things like certificates of rehabilitation that, that, that say, yes, this person committed these acts and they should, should still have to say they, they, they um, had these convictions because you can't go back and change time. But we're now gonna, like, likewise, we're gonna certify their rehabilitation and the same criminal justice system that said this person was a danger in 1995 are now going to certify that this person, because of what he, uh, he's done in, in the meantime, since getting released, uh, they, they should now be deemed as, as a non-risk, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and we know this from the, 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 the criminological research that after a, a certain period of time, uh, five years, seven years, the, 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 the ex-offender uh, uh, is no more at risk of, of reoffending than, than a, a person with no criminal record. So, so these sort of things need their own kind of certification because uh, um, the, the records are important things, especially in, in our current uh, world where anybody can hop onto a laptop and, and do a Google search on, on someone to see if, if they've got these records. Again, Sarah Logison's research, I'm hoping she's on here. I saw her, her, her name at one point. Um, uh, the, the other question, the other point was, um, uh, what would be besides sealing records, Brian? There was two things they, they, uh, they mentioned. You're muted, Brian. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was raising the upper age of juvenile oh, yeah. jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is is, is so important. I mean, we, we're in the UK. We have one of the lowest on the planet uh, because of uh, a terrible case. You know, the the, the James Bulger murder back uh, with, by, by two eleven year olds. So, so we uh, uh, age of responsibility at something like ten in the, in, in the UK, and it's just 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 terrible uh, notion. You know, now the brain research. 
is saying uh, that, that, that the human brain isn't fully developed in particular around things like self-control that are related to, to criminal behavior until the, the, the mid, uh, early to mid 20s. And this is perfectly consistent with what we see in the age crime curve. It's consistent with anyone who, who was a, a young person at one point can, can remember. And, and um, um, it, it, it's, you know, that's the direction we should be moving to, to, to as some countries are recognizing that, that young adulthood, emerging adulthood, whatever it is, as its own kind of category in, in terms of, of responsibility. So, so yeah, like sealing off records like we do with under 18s in, in that later group and allowing, cause there's a lot of life course left after 22 that, that, that says, you know, give the person uh, uh, the, the, the next a chance over these next 60 years to re-biograph and move on from, from their, 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 their early twenties. Um, have there been any studies on desistance and restorative practices or desistance and processes for victims? Yeah, yeah, great. Um, uh, both uh, uh, is the answer, and, and, and I, could, I could send you links. Um, uh, uh, we, we had a, a special issue in a journal called uh, Restorative Justice, although I think it's now changed its name to International Journal of Restorative Justice, the way these things do, but, but it used to be called Restorative Justice, and they did a special issue on desistance in RJ. Um, there's a lot of, of back and forth borrowing between the two. I mean, uh, we, we love their work and, 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 and they love ours. Uh, and, 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 and so we, we, we have learned a great deal. John Braithwaite uh, was, was writing about you know, crime, shame, and reintegration in 1989. And it became the kind of foundational text for, for one of the foundational texts, along with Howard Zare and others, for, for restorative justice movement. Uh, his work, though, was writing um, pre-restorative justice and, and, and has just as many implications for desistance. We, I mean, it was about how people, um, how we, we, we deal with uh, offending in a way that doesn't stigmatize, doesn't lead to, to persistence, but actually lets the person move on and reintegrate af af after they, they, they've been sanctioned. And, and so, so uh, yes, huge overlaps. And, and, um, and, and yeah, the, the, the restorative justice folks I have a, 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 a real strong sense of psychology, which, which is where a lot of the assistance research is. They understand um, the, 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 the social psychology practices uh, and the processes of shame and forgiveness that are at, at the core of, of what's going on with desistance. Um, the, uh, I, I gotta start writing these down. There was, it was a second part, oh, oh victims. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Less so with victims, although there was a fascinating article in, in, in uh, coming out of Australia where they used the stages, the sort of the, the processes I was referring to of desistance. Uh, and, and they said, uh, this was uh, a victimologist said, you know, you guys are talking about the same thing that we've talked about. These are the stages of recovery from being victimized. And, and, and they also, the, the, the victim goes through many of those same dynamics that the, the desister does. And, and there's probably no um, coincidence there because most sisters are also victims themselves, victims of childhood abuse or, or sexual uh, abuse, and 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 uh, are individuals moving on both from from uh, the crimes they've committed, but also a very uh, uh, abusive past. And 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 so so likewise, the the the, the victim of serious crime uh, goes through a similar dynamic, and and the two are, are not. Um, we don't engage in the criminal justice system as, as the, the restorative movement would say, there's too little involvement of, of victims, but actually on the assistance journey, the, 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 the victim plays a much more central role because so often the, the, um, the person who offends does offend against family, against friends, uh, uh, you know, even if their they're direct victims aren't family members, they, they, have, uh, they have hurt and shamed their family and so need to uh, uh, reintegrate and, 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 and um, uh, go through those mutual processes of, of, of forgiveness with, with family, friends, and, 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 and in particular, the victims, for sure. Um, are you aware of any desistance work that has integrated supports for individuals with mental illness? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, uh, less so. Um, certainly, the, the uh, mental health research um, is, 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 is we're incorporating more issues 
uh, of mental wellness in, into desistance research, um, a little bit on personality disorder and, and, and desistance. Um, uh, but, but yes, uh, more work certainly needs to be done. And, and, and uh, um, you know, in general, the, the, the overlap between mental illness and, and, and crime is an important one. So, so, so to look at, at the role of desistance there, I, I can't come up with uh, um, citations quite as readily in my head, but but uh, I'm sure there are a few, but, but more work needs to be done. If there's any PhD students on the line, it sounds like a, a real important topic there for somebody. And, uh, I think this will be our last question. Um, okay. It is a bit of a larger one, but what is the impact of the child welfare system on desistance? Wow, okay. Um, yeah, um, large and, and, and you know, those, um, uh, uh, the, the two systems, uh, criminal justice and, and, and welfare are, are, are treated um, separately. Uh, uh, we have different experts who study one from the other. Um, I, I actually came from a, a PhD program uh, that was in human development and social policy where, where uh, a lot of my colleagues were studying uh, child welfare, and, and in particular, this was um, though those those early '90s uh, where where uh, the, the Clinton uh, was was uh, was changing welfare as we knew it, uh, and 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 it was no coincidence that this was also uh, dramatic changes happening in criminal justice in that same era. And and I don't uh, I don't mean to blame uh, the Clinton administration. For anything serious, but but the the um, convergence of those things. So I blame the the, the early '90s anyway, and, and including on my own PhD work. But but the uh, uh, so so far today I have. Uh, but but the, those early '90s gave us those two dramatic changes at, at the same time. And and, and I think uh, our current era we're, we're seeing. You know, and and now I don't focus that much on welfare anymore. But we we're seeing dramatic changes in in criminal justice policy. And, and I'm certain there, there's been parallel changes happening in, in, in that field as well, because the two do go hand in hand. Uh, Louis Quaquant and, and, and others have um, done better than, than I certainly have at tracking these. David Garland, uh, the, 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 the way that punishment and welfare um, move together or move in opposite directions in, in, in societies, I, I think is, is huge. And, and of course, youth justice, uh, where, where I know most of the, the folks listening have expertise is, is, is right there and in, in, in the, the, the intersection but between those two. So, so um, um, I, I don't have a great answer, but it's a great question. Uh, well, Dr. Maruna, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the YGI and everyone in attendance for, uh, for presenting this incredibly important work on desistance. Um, I really hope that our audience members found it as interesting and useful as I did. Um, so before we close, um, I do just have a few announcements and items put on everyone's radar. The next session of our Lunch and Learn series will be on November 11th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be hosting Lisa Good of Albany's Urban Grief. Um, December's Lunch and Learn speaker will be Dr. Timothy McCuddy of the University of Memphis. He will be speaking about online peers and youth violence, so stay tuned for those announcements. Um, also featuring Dr. McCuddy is the first episode of the YJI's new podcast series, Let's Talk About Youth Justice, which explores bullying and cyberbullying through a conversation with Dr. McCuddy. Um, Alicia will be putting the link for that podcast episode in the chat section. Um, the YJI has also launched a youth engagement initiative called Empowering Youth Voices. The Empowering Youth Voices project seeks to provide youth and young adults with a platform to share their perspectives regarding the COVID-19 pandemic and current racial justice movement in the United States through writing or visual art. The YJI will feature selected submissions and a special issue of its newsletter on the same page. And three submissions will be selected as contest winners. More information about this contest can be found on the homepage for our website. And shortly after we finish here, we'll be sending a survey to you all via email. If you have the time, please complete the survey as it allows you to provide further feedback and questions for us. This information will be uh, used to improve future webinar sessions. The survey should take no longer than about five minutes to complete. And finally, if you've not already done so, feel free to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. The links to those accounts can be found on our website. And just a reminder that the views expressed here are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of the New York State Youth Justice Institute. 
And in closing, I just want to thank you all for taking part in this session of the YJI Lunch and Learn series. We hope that you've gained something from this webinar and that you continue to think about the work that Dr. Maruna has presented today. We also look forward to seeing you at future YJI events and webinars. So thanks again, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your week.